It's a beautiful sunny day in Wiltshire and I thought what shall I do today? Um, and the answer is I'm gonna go and test ride a bike. We're in Swindon and uh, I'm going along to my local dealership of many many different sorts of bikes so I'm going to Blades uh, I'll say they do all sorts of bikes Indians, Harleys, Triumphs, KTMs all sorts of bikes and they've got one little bike that's arrived that I'm rather interested in so I'm going to bimble along and take that out for a little ride and see how it suits me. And here we are at uh, Blades Motorcycles. Customer parking, where should we park? I suggest just about here. So, I've been to Blade, picked up the bike, just ridden around the corner just to set up the cameras and stuff, and um, this is what I'm riding today. So this is a Royal Enfield Himalayan. A lot of construction work going on around here. So this is Royal Enfield's adventure bike before the Scram came out. This is an incredibly popular bike. Lots of people I know have one of these. It's a 411 engine, single cylinder, so it's still a thumper. Um, it's not got a great horsepower. It's, I think it's 24.5, um, but apparently the torque is all in the lower end. Uh, this is a Part X bike that came into uh, Blade when the previous owner upgraded. It's a 2018 model and it has got about 15,000 on the clock so she's fairly worn in. It looks quite tidy. So why am I looking at adventure bikes? Well, I quite enjoyed my uh, little bit of traily, tracky, off-roady bit that I did um, on my last camping trip. and. Uh, I just fancy something a little bit different. I don't necessarily want more power, um, but I just thought I'd give this a go, just to see if it floats my boat. So uh, I'm gonna put the gear back on, head out, and uh, see what I think. So one of the first things is, it has a side stand, when it's pretty an upright side stand as well. Um, and it also has a center stand, which is uh, quite handy. Um, Maneuverability, is she heavy? No, I can, uh, I can quite happily push her around. Height wise, 
Well, I guess I could stand on the pegs to get on her. But my feet, I don't know if you can see that. So I'm basically the first half um, up to the ball of my toes. First half of my foot is on the floor on both sides. So that's quite good. Bloody big mirrors. So the only thing I'm not, I don't know, it seems to have like two, the throttle, what's going on with this? So it's got like a lot of play and then it seems to click here, but this bit doesn't seem to do anything. So there's a lot of twist where it doesn't do anything. And then finally it does. Interesting. Right. Let's remember that the pegs are actually slightly further back than they are on the the uh, on the meteor. Oh, and the other thing is, I need to remember <laughs> it's toe lift, not heel push unlike my bike. That's quite a comfortable riding position. It's quite, um, forces you to sit quite upright. My knees are tucked quite nicely around the tank. And I see what they mean about the torque is quite lower down. Yeah, that's going to be a challenge, is uh, remembering to keep my feet further back. So it's slightly taller than the Meteor. Brakes are a little bit spongy. And that's actually quite confusing. The, um, let's remember what I'm doing. I presume it's an adventure bike thing, but the, um, the handlebars move independently to the screen and all the settings, so that's interesting. It's definitely a completely different setup position wise. Let's get a bit of air in here. light very light and nimble so apparently these are pretty good for nipping around town as well as doing kind of adventure adventure rides very big uh, wing mirrors which is nice. So I've got the bike for about an hour. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go, if I'm honest. There aren't really any trails around here, unfortunately, that I can take it on. And I'm pretty sure Blade wouldn't appreciate it if I rocked up with it absolutely covered. So the other bike that I've they've got coming in um, that. I'm going to test drive when it comes back in. Again, that's another one on Partex. Um, is the Honda uh, CB500X, which is similar to, to this, uh, except it's got a lot more um, HP. It's uh, 48, so it's nearly double the, the horsepower of this. And obviously that's a 500. Um, looking at the spec on it, it is a little bit taller. Um, 
so I'm not sure how I'm going to get on with that. I don't know if it can be could be lowered if I was interested. I don't know. It's a very new bike, that one. That one is uh, only a year, I think, old and has very low mileage. I think it's something like two and a half thousand. So I can comfortably get one foot flat on the floor. That lower torque, I can definitely feel. I imagine it is pretty good for pulling up hills and things. What I'm interested in using this bike for would potentially be some of the uh, Trans-European Trail. So not nothing, you know, nothing too adventurous off-road, uh, just a little bit, a little bit of trail. Um, but in order to get there, obviously, you have to do some long-ish motorway haul miles first. So I'm actually wondering how comfortable this little bike is going to be when it gets up to about 70, whether or not it's... Uh, I think that's its top speed, to be fair. 75, I think, is its top speed. But um, how comfortable it feels and how much vibration you get. I know on the Meteor, at about 70, you do get a fair bit of vibration through the pegs. Not a lot through the handlebars. Um, so I'd just be interested to see if I am going to do the Trans-European Trail on, the, on something like this, or this, how, uh, how comfortable that is. So I might just do a little, a little run down the uh, dual carriageway. I mean, it's uh, tried and tested as far as off-road tra off trail roads go, so everyone's, everyone's done some of that on one of these. It's a nice bit of sun in the face. decent sized screen on it. I have no idea what all these little cluster of uh, information things are. I imagine, oh, let's just get on this dual carriageway, talk later. Okay, so we are in fifth gear, uh, doing 55. It's currently quite comfortable. I feel it could sit here quite happily. Um, I open her up a bit. It definitely got more to go. 60 easily. Oh, there it's a little bit vibey. Okay, so at 60, it's a little bit vibey through the seat. Um, definitely feel definitely feel a lot of interesting vibrations through the seat. But let's go down to my happy spot. Let's, uh, <laughs> this is all coming out very wrong. Let's, let's hover it around my, my happy space, which is sort of 55-ish. Let's see how, um, see how she feels there. Okay, vibrations are, are considerably less at, at 55. She definitely does have pull if I wanted it to. A good thing about this position um, is I, I don't think I'd get backache significantly. It's 
does feel quite a natural position. My arms are sort of bent. I'm not, I'm not fully stretched out. I've got a bit of bend in there. A 2018 and it's got 15,790 miles on the clock. That's some mileage. Just looking at these dials, I think one's a compass. Well, that's news to me. For display in miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Gear readout, clock, mileage. I'm not sure what all those lights are for. Well, one's an indicator. Well, that's good to know. Drop down speed wise, drop down a gear, nothing behind me. Yeah, I see what they mean. The torque is definitely in the lower end. this bike I do love this bike it's just so comfortable it's so easy to ride would I like a little bit more power yeah I mean who wouldn't um, interestingly Royal Enfield are going to be launching the Super Meteor which is a 650 version a 650 twin of this current bike now that might be quite interesting <laughs> will i be able to do adventure and trails and stuff on it no no i won't who's going <sighs> choices choices so many things to think about do I want a more powerful road bike? Could I bear to get rid of this? Could I part X this for a super meteor? Do I want an adventure bike? Yes, I do. So how much money do I want to invest on an adventure bike? Bikes are so addictive. Creeping bike disease. Get one and they spread. It's all your fault, Legatha. Because I don't have to buy anything. I kind of do though. the next day and I did a lot of thinking last night. I enjoyed the Himalayan. It's the right size for me, it's the right weight for me, it handles right for me, it's comfortable, I can stand up on it, it handles well around town, it's got good fuel economy, it's got 
a lower horsepower, but the torque is where it needs to be in the low range. I think for me, it's probably sufficient. It's probably just about as good as I need. So maybe I was just unlucky. Maybe that's just not the Himalayan for me. I'm not going to give up. So I've had a little look around and there is another dealership um, a little bit further away that has a slightly newer Himalayan um, with half the mileage. So later on this week, I'm going to go and test ride that one. I'm also going to carry on and test ride the Honda CB500X when that comes in, just so I've got a really good comparison. On top of that, this weekend I have booked myself onto an adventure trial day course experience thing. I'm not really sure what I've let myself in for, if I'm honest. It's basically a company that gives you trail um, experience. So you turn up, you hire their bike, their kit, their instructor, and they take you out for the day and show you what trail and lane riding is all about. If I can't handle it, if my knees can't handle it, if my back can't handle it, um, then this is all irrelevant anyway. And in that case, that 650 twin <laughs> meteor is definitely coming home with me. So stay tuned and see how this progresses. If you're enjoying my channel, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. And if there's any like-minded people out there who are as batty as we are, then please feel free to share. It really does help the channel grow. Thank you.